In this lecture, I want to talk about the short iron butterfly, which you may often hear referred to as an iron fly. That's another way that options traders refer to it. Now, this is a pretty cool trade. Uh, you'll see that it has a lot in uh, a lot that's similar to both straddles and strangles and uh, put and call spreads. So what you basically do to create a short iron butterfly is you sell a call and a put that are at the same strike price. We usually do this at the money. In that case, what you were basically putting on is a short straddle. Now, again, the problem with being short a straddle is you can lose a lot of money if the stock moves up or down. And so one way of hedging against that is by rather than doing a short straddle, you do an, a short uh, iron butterfly. And by doing that, you basically buy the wings, as it's called. This is one reason it's called a butterfly. So what you're going to do to hedge against the stock moving up a lot, you're going to buy an out of the money call. And to hedge against the stock moving down a lot, you're going to buy an out of, out of the money put. You're going to use this to sort of protect, protect the wings. Now this can also be seen, the whole trade can be seen as selling an at the money call spread and selling an at the money put spread and where both of those spreads share the same short uh, strike price. So this will make a lot more sense when I give you an example. This would be an example of shorting an iron butterfly, a short iron butterfly or iron fly position. Uh, you do, let's say the stock is trading right at 100 in this case. Uh, we'll sell to open a 100 call. We'll sell to open a 100 put. Those are the strike prices, both at the money. So this is basically shorting and at the money straddle. And then we're going to buy the wings to protect ourselves. So we'll buy the 105 call in case the stock goes up a lot. We'll buy to open the, one, the 95 put in case the stock goes down a lot. That's basically how you short an iron butterfly. So let's take a look at a real example in Robinhood. Uh, so I'm using Shopify for this example simply because it's it closed on Friday at a really nice round uh, strike price, which is uh, $365. So the stock's currently at $365. And so the way we would do an iron, uh, a short iron butterfly on Shopify here is we would sell an at the money straddle. So we'd sell a 365 straddle. So we're basically basically going to sell a 365 call, sell a 365 put, and obviously we'll be collecting some premium by selling those. And then we're going to buy the wings to protect ourselves. So on the upside, we're going to buy a 380 call, and we're on the downside, we're going to buy a 350 put. Now you can see that this gets us a, a net credit of 1325. So if we do it with just one option in each case, so we sell one call option, we sell one put option, both at the money, we buy one call option out of the money, we buy a put option out of the money, uh, then uh, our credit will be just, uh, the premium received will just be 1325 times 100. So we will, we will collect, to enter this trade not counting commissions, and we don't have to count commissions on, on Robinhood, we will collect $1,325. So another way of looking at this is if we look at a chart, here's the stock, it traded, it closed right at 365. That's where this, this horizontal red line is. So we're gonna sell an at the money straddle uh, right here. And then we're gonna buy the wings to protect ourselves. So we'll, we'll sell the uh, 365 straddle, then we'll buy the 380 call. This is a 380 right here. And we will also buy a put on the down to protect against the downside. So we'll buy a uh, 350 put. So that's basically what a uh, uh, shorting an iron iron butterfly looks like. And uh, the break even price can be so basically this is a bet. I should I should rewind a little bit. This is a bet that the stock will stay close to the center area where you sell the uh, sell the straddle. It's just like a short straddle. We don't want the stock to move a lot. And if the stock stays close to our, or is exactly right at 365 at expiration, that's where we will maximize our profits. We will maximize our losses. We'll have the max loss if the stock is at 380 or above or at 350 or below at expiration or close to expiration. And we can calculate our break-even price just by taking a look at this credit that we receive. So we receive, we're receiving $13.25. So basically our break even would be if the stock moves away from that short straddle price by $13.25 on the upside. So 13.25 points if the stock 
goes from uh, 365 to uh, 378 25 or if the stock goes down 13.25 points these would be so we basically have two break-even points we have a break-even point on the upside and a break-even point on the downside so that's basically how you set it up uh, as we said this is a market neutral strategy you're you're not really betting the stocks are going to go up or down you're betting it's going to stay right around where it is in the case of shopify staying right around 365 and the nice thing, as we'll see, is it has a limited risk and a limited reward. So it's the kind of trade you kind of know how much you, you stand to make, the most you can make, and you also don't have to worry about waking up to a really nasty surprise. Uh, so the way we calculate the max profit, as we did with the Shopify example, we just take that credit received, that 1325 uh, times 100, in which case uh, it would have been 1325. That's the max profit. And as we mentioned, that max profit will occur if the stock is right at the straddle strike price, the short straddle strike price at expiration. Max loss is uh, calculated a little bit differently. You basically want to take the width of the widest spread, either on the top or the bottom, subtract the credit received, and multiply by 100. So let's go back to the, uh, the Shopify example just to clarify that. So we're collecting a credit of... Uh, Let's just uh, clear this out quickly. So we're collecting a credit of 1325. And let's look at the width of our spread. So we basically have, uh, we have, uh, let's clear this out. We have 365 right in the middle here. And then we go uh, 15 points up to 380. So that's 15 points. And we go to, for our uh, long put strike, price we go 15 points down to 350 and again 365 is this uh, this middle number right here so the way the way we calculate our max um, our max loss is just to take the width of the widest spread in this case we have a spread of 15 on the top and 15 at the bottom so we can choose either one but take the width of that widest spread minus the credit received Okay, so let's just do that. So the width is 15, and we received, what was our credit? Our credit was 1325. So 15 minus 1325, that gets us, that's equal to $1.75. And then we multiply that $1.75 by uh, 100, and that will give us our maximum uh, possible loss. In this case, $175 if we do it with just one option. So you can see this is kind of a cool trade the way we set it up because we're collecting our max profit, uh, which is gonna be hard to get because the stock has to expire right at 365. But our max uh, reward is $1,325, $1,325. Our max possible loss is just $175. Now, the more you trade these, the more you can play around depending how you think the stock is gonna move. And you can make these, you can make these wings wider you can make them less wide. Now, the uh, the wider you make them, the uh, more premium you'll get to collect. So you can see that it costs some money here to protect the wings. If we did really far out of the money call and really far out of the money put, these premiums, these uh, these debits that we would have to pay would be much lower, and as a result, the total credit would be higher. So this is sort of the trade-off, where if you make the wings really wide, uh, if you make the wings you know, way up here, for example, and, and way down here, you have less protection, but you're also paying less for protection, so your maximum profit is going to be higher. And this is something that really comes with practice. The more you do it, the more, uh, the more you'll have a good feeling for how wide to make them. And a lot of this will really depend on the stock chart as well. This isn't the best example of a stock chart. I wanted to pick something where the stock was trading right at the money to make it easy. Uh, but if you have very strong views on where the stock has strong resistance on the top and strong uh, support at the bottom, you can pick those strike prices and you can make them as far away as you're comfortable. Uh, and again, it's always a risk reward comparison, comparing the premium collected with the max possible risk. But again, the max loss is just going to be the width of the widest spread. You can make uh, the top spread wider and the bottom spread less wide or vice versa. But max loss is always going to be uh, if the stock moves in the direction where you have that widest spread. Um, 
subtract the credit received and multiply by 100. And this max loss, uh, I think I said, but I should just emphasize, will occur if the stock is at or above that long call strike price or at or below that long put strike price. So those are your two protections, those two wing protections. And if the stock gets to them or goes beyond them, uh, that's your, your max loss. And if the stock moves a lot in one direction, you're still protected by those strike prices. And so you'll basically have the same loss if the stock is right at the strike price of the long call or if it goes way above the long call, or if it's right at the strike price of the long put, or if it goes way below the long put. Those basically limit your loss. So again, a short uh, a short iron fly, a short iron butterfly, is a bet that the stock's gonna stay, is going to stay right around that straddle strike price until expiration. And if the stock moves up too far or down too far, you're gonna to start to lose money, and you'll also have assignment risk, as we'll see. Upper break-even price, we already talked about this, is just going to be that short call strike uh, of the straddle plus the credit received. Lower break-even price, short put strike minus credit received. And again, that was just um, that was just where we basically took, uh, let's clear this off. We said we could go, so here's the top strike price. Here's the bottom strike price. Here's where we sold it. Our break-even price is just going to be, you take this middle line and you add the premium received. That's kind of your cushion. And in this case, what did we say? You said it was uh, 13.25. So our break-even price on the upside is gonna be right here. Our break-even price on the downside is gonna be right here. And again, this is a uh, 13.25 right here. So that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Assignment risk. Well, let's just look, go back to our example where we sold and at the money straddle at 100, we bought the wings at 105 and 95. Now, what, what does assignment risk look like in this, in this iron fly? Well, if the stock is between, if the stock is right at 100, there's no assignment risk, obviously, because neither the short call or the short put will be in the money. And again, you only have assignment risk, remember, from being short an option. Now, if the stock is between 100 and 105, that short call the call that you're short is going to be in the money. So you're going to have some assignment risk for that, especially as you get at or close to expiration. And if you are assigned, you could be end up being short 100 shares of stock. Again, you can always trade out of that. You can trade out of the uh, short call before it happens, but something to be aware of. And uh, vice versa, if the stock is between 95 and 100, you're not going to have to worry about that short call because it's going to be out of the money. But that short put, that put is going to be in the money. You're short it. And so you'll have assignment risk for that short put, especially at or close to expiration. You could be assigned uh, 100 shares of stock, being long 100 shares of stock, in which case you'd want to trade out of it. Uh, now, if the stock is above 105 or below 95, this can be a little counterintuitive, there's no assignment risk. And that's simply because you're short a call, then you're long a call. Or if you're below 95, you're short a put and you're long a put. And those two will cancel each other out. So then there's no assignment risk. If you do get assigned the, uh, so let's say you get assigned on the short call, you're short 100 shares of stock, you're completely protected by that, uh, by that long call. And likewise, if you're, if you're assigned long 100 shares of stock because of that short put, that long put's going to protect you and give you time to trade out of it. Now, what do the Greeks look like for a short uh, iron fly or iron butterfly? Well, as you'd expect, uh, just like with a short straddle, uh, starts off delta neutral, especially if you sell that short straddle right at the money, right where the stock is trading, if the strike prices are right where the stock is trading. But you can also skew it to be bullish or bearish by, uh, by changing uh, either the widths, uh, how far out you buy the long call, how far out you buy the long put, or also if you do it slightly, uh, rather than doing that short straddle at the money, if you do it a little bit above where the stock's trading or below where the stock's trading, that might skew your strategy to be more bullish or bearish. Gamma is negative, just like you'd expect with a short, uh, a short straddle, because if the stock goes up, your short delta gets bigger. Now, again, this is capped by that long call, so it's not quite as dangerous. But if the stock goes, as we said, between 100 and 105, you're going to get more and more short the stock as the stock rises because of that short short at the money call that gets more and more in the money. And likewise, if the stock falls, you're gonna get more and more long the stock because of that, uh, that short put. 
But fortunately, you've got the wings capped, so there's not that kind of runaway risk that you would have normally with a short straddle. Theta, theta of this uh, of an iron butterfly, short an iron butterfly is going to be positive because you're going to make money from the time decay of that short call and that short put. And just like a short straddle, you're going to have twice as much time decay, which is really nice. Now, in the case of an iron butterfly, a short iron butterfly, that long out of the money call and the long out of the money put will also uh, suffer from time decay. And you'll lose money on them because you are long them, but you will make more money from the time decay of the short call and the short put because they're closer to being at the money. And uh, as a result, the whole position looks theta positive and makes money over time. Now, unfortunately, it's vega negative, fortunately or unfortunately, as you'd expect from a short straddle. If implied volatility goes up, uh, that means that the value of the short call and the short put uh, will go up. Obviously, when implied volatility moves up for an option, the value of the option moves up. Or I'm sort of saying it backwards. If the, uh, if the price of an option moves up, uh, the options pricing formula, as we saw, dictates that that means that the implied volatility has increased. In other words, option prices go up, people are pricing in more volatility, more risk. And being short a straddle is vega negative. Being short a straddle with protected wings like an iron butterfly is also vega negative. So you will lose, uh, you'll lose money if implied volatility um, goes up. Now, it's okay to lose money uh, from the, the, the neg negative vega as long as you're making more money from the positive theta. So what we really want, as we said, in a short iron butterfly, we want the stock to stay right at that short straddle strike price, as close to that as possible. And if it moves either direction, that means volatility has moved up, in which case implied volatility gets priced a little higher, and uh, the movement of the stock may lose you more money than you're actually making from the time decay. So again, it's like flying an airplane, three dimensions. Uh, this is just a recap of really what we just said. Short iron butterfly will make money from the passage of time. So you want the stock to uh, stay right there in the middle of the uh, straddle. And you also want time to uh, pass. That, that helps you. The more time that goes on without the stock making a big move, the better you'll do. Also, if implied volatility falls, which is another way of saying that the price of the options uh, fall, you will also make money since you have a negative vega position being short an iron butterfly. Likewise, if vol rises, you're going to lose money. Or if the stock makes a big move up or down, you're going to lose money. So again, this is a, uh, it's a market neutral position. It's the kind of position you would like to put on when vol is high and then see vol fall. And you'd also like uh, while vol is falling, you would like to see the stock not make a big move. You'd like to just see day by day pass, so you constantly are making money from theta, de theta, uh, theta decay. And that's really how uh, short iron butterflies make money. So if a stock, if you're expecting a stock to make a big move in either direction, definitely don't want to be short a uh, straddle. And that also means that you don't want to be short an iron butterfly. Even though you do, you can sleep a little bit better at night because you do have those long wings uh, being protected on either side.